Hello everybody and thanks for checking out my review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Tag Heuer CY2111. Uh, this is the Octavia 2003 reissue. Now this watch has been sitting in a vault in Italy for 17 years. And when I got it, all the labels and stickers were still on it. It was brand new old stock and it was a really lucky find. Just to give you a quick tip, when you're purchasing an older mechanical or automatic watch, it is suggested that these watches be sent in for service every five to seven years. Lubrication breaks down, O-rings dry up, and this causes excessive wear on the gears and the parts. So factor that into the purchase price or your new old stock collectible piece that you spend good money on could cost a lot more than you bargain for. Now with quartz, you want to make sure that if it hasn't been run for years, that the battery does get changed immediately. And you also want to get insurance from the seller that there is a return policy because if the battery leaked in a quartz, it could ruin its movement. Now I got the movement on this watch restored by a company called Shammy Watchmaking in New Jersey. They're incredible, very reasonably priced with a quick turnaround time. Uh, this watch is now running accuracy at less than one second per day. They also check the water resistance on it. Uh, they take repairs in from all around the world. So go to www.shammyfinewatchmaking.com or call them at 973-785-0004. Tell them that Doug FNJ sent you and you'll get a 10% discount. All right, so now to get into the unboxing, uh, the box pretty much hasn't changed in a, a, a lot of years. I mean, basically it's the same black cardboard box. It's got the Tag Heuer logo on the top here. And opening up the box, you have a really nice wooden box on the inside here with leather on the inside I'll get into that in a moment there on the bottom of the box you have your instruction manual written in multiple languages you have your international guarantee and you'll notice the old logo the G is different than the way they do it now and typically they're now black and silver and getting into the watch itself the beautiful wood box you open it up, it's got the leather around the corners here, leather on the top, and very old pillow as you can see. The tags are also interesting here. You have this nice plastic piece which designates it an automatic with the Tag Heuer logo. You have the tag that gives you the model number, 3000 euro when this was originally sold. The Tag Heuer logo on the top. And of course you have the watch. All right, so a quick history. Octavia was initially released back in 1933, long before LVMH or Tag Group got involved with the brand. Octavia was originally released as a dashboard clock for automobiles and airplanes, which is how it got its name from auto and aviation. So Tag Heuer wanted to pay respect to the Heuer history. So in 2003, they released reissues of the popular models like this Octavia, which paid homage to the vintage Viceroy with subdials at the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock and added orange highlights. They inserted the Tag Heuer logo, and unfortunately it didn't work out to be a popular move. The reissue didn't sell as much as Tag Heuer hoped, and it became more popular years later after they stopped making it. Now, it was felt that one of the reasons it didn't work out was that collectors felt that they could hunt down the older original Viceroy edition with the classic Hoyer shield. This made this model release limited, and Octavia didn't see another reissue until 2017 with the crowdsourced Jack Hoyer reissue with numerous models like this, which I'll be doing in a future review. So this is the first re-edition that Tag Hoyer used to place the crown on the left side and the pushers on the right. It's got a domed sapphire crystal, it's got the older style beads of rice bracelet with the two button release. And if you see on the back here, on the back case, it etched in the Tag Heuer logo with the Octavia writing on the top. Now you notice also it's not a screw back design. They use screws to fasten it to the case. And looking at the front, it's got the black dial with the two sub dials. It's got loom on the markers and hands and here's how the loom works. Now they call this movement the Caliber 11, but it's not a true Caliber 11 like they used on older models. This re-edition is an ETA 2892 with a Dubois de Prez chronograph piggybacked on the movement. And I talked about this type of movement in my review on the Hoyer Monza reissue. So on that watch I showed how the crown sits below the stopwatch button so they're not perfectly aligned like a straight line when looking at it from the side. This version of course continued the tradition of the Viceroy and the Monaco's and put the crown on the left side like I mentioned earlier. So using the separate chronograph on the movement saves wear and tear on the movement itself. 
Now this watch is not big and it does wear well. It's 43 millimeters wide with the crown. It's 13.5 millimeters thick and the crown winds really smoothly on this watch and the pushers give a firm click. So when you want to run the stopwatch, all you have to do is press the top button here and you'll notice that the chronograph moves. And then to stop it, of course, you press it again. And to restart it, you just press on the bottom right button. It's got a very classic and sporty look. And if you look to purchase one of these, they are very hard to find in this type of condition. So now I'm going to give you a wrist shot. And of course, I have seven and a half inch wrists. So that's my review on the Take Hoyer Otavia from 2003. It's the CY2111. So once again, if you're looking for a great watchmaker, reach out to Chamois Fine Watchmaking at ChamoisFineWatchmaking.com or you can call them at 973-785-0004. Tell them Doug FNJ sent you for a 10% discount. I want to thank you for taking time to watch my review. If you like it, please click on the thumbs up. If you really like it, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of future reviews. Please feel free to comment with feedback and questions below. I always read and always answer. You can find me on Twitter at DougFNJ, and you can find me on Watch You Seek. I am the Tag Hoyer moderator over there, so there's great people, great discussion, and I look forward to seeing you. So thank you again for watching. Looking forward to doing many reviews in the new year, and have a great day.